Hey guys, Light10 here. Thank you for joining me in this video on what is 999 day. That's right, it's the 9th of the 9th. 19. It's close enough, okay? It's got three nines in it at the very least. Now, this is not a review of the game. In fact, I've already done so. So, if you want to check it out, you can check out on the card, which I'm pretty sure I'm pointing to the right corner. Who knows? And that will tell you all my thoughts and feelings of the game. This is instead nine theories that I came up with after playing through the game for the second time on the Nonary Games collection. Because I never played through the sequels, I had all of these theories after I finished the game. So this is like a little bonus video for that. Now I know that some of these have been disproven and some of these don't work and all that kinds of stuff. This is just a snapshot into my brain after I finished 999. There is so many spoilers in this, so do not watch this video if you have not played the game, because there will be spoilers for the story and for the ending and some of the twists. So do not, do not watch this if you have any interest in playing through the game. In fact, maybe you won't even understand it if you haven't played through the game. With all of that said, let's get into our first theory. Theory 1. Time travel of some kind will be introduced in the series. There has to be a reason for Alice being part of the mummy legend and turning up at the end of the game. I know that she's in the next game, so that's where I think the time travel will be introduced. Theory 2 The robe that Snake was wearing is part of the bad guy organization, left over from the time nine years ago, or maybe even left over from when the games were played long before that. Whatever the case may be, I think we will learn more about this organization in the upcoming games. Theory 3. A common theory is that the whole game is in flux like a Schrodinger's cat kind of thing. Until Junpei actually solves the puzzle or does not in the incinerator, Akane is both alive and dead. Until that point where the puzzle is solved or not, all futures are available, which is why we have the multiple timelines and multiple endings. That's also why we have different memories for people like Snake, Santa, and Seven. It explains why Akane gets the fevers because it's her incineration, and why Seven has a splitting headache at the end of the game. It's like both of his memories come crashing into his brain at once. I had this theory like so many other people, and it explains why Santa goes through so much in order to save his sister. Theory 4 According to the Q&A with Yuchikoshi, people were watching our Nonary game. This could be good people seeing that the revenge was being served on the Cradle organization, or it could be bad guys from the Cradle organization, or maybe just other bad guys in general, watching their friends and co-workers being killed, as well as the knowledge of their shady dealings getting out into the world. Cradle being evil becoming public knowledge is going to be very bad for quite a few people, in my opinion. Theory 5 Due to Junpei and Akane's connection and the fact that she's going to do something else, which is bigger according to Yuchikoshi, I think that she will involve Junpei in some way. Maybe she saw more of the future than just the Nonary game. Maybe she saw Virtue's Last Reward as well and is now setting that up. So methinks Junpei will be in the next game somehow. Theory 6 I think the reason June and Santa ran off was so they could set up another Nonary game to punish more people. While Crater was part of the Nonary games nine years ago and they have been since punished, there were Nonary games before that and I think that because Yuchikoshi said that they were going to be doing something big, I think they're going to be taking down the organization that started these things. According to Yuchikoshi and the game, there were people watching our Nonary game and the odd robe that Snake has and Zero's MO of punishing bad people, it all points to them trying to take down this organization as the next big thing. With the next game being called Virtue's Last Reward, I think this might tie into that because a virtue is something good and the reward of all of their hard work is putting stop to an evil organization. So who knows? We'll have to play the next game and find out. Theory 7 how did Seven have the wrong memories? From the Q&A, Yuchikoshi implies that Seven knew more than what he was saying, or that someone had implanted a false memory into his head. But what if there was another explanation? The whole point of the game is that the future is in a state of flux. We see evidence with this with the multiple endings, the knowledge that shouldn't exist, Akane and her fevers, and the actual ending itself. With all of these things, what if Seven was regaining memories from a different timeline, and that he too is special just like Junpei and Akane? He is shown to have very good intuition, which might be due to him tapping into the morphogenetic field and helping him out with his detective work. What if he taps into the field when he has amnesia and learns of a different time where something different happened? Akane dies. Theory 8 Who are Santa and Akane's parents? 
It is strange that in the game they were orphans, but they go to what looks like good schools. Aoi is seen in a private school uniform, and Akane doesn't seem like she's in a bad place, especially when she goes to the same school as Junpei. When we find out about the kids that were kidnapped as part of the first Nonary game, only 16 kids are reported missing, but we know that there are 18, two groups of nine. While we are told that they are orphans, someone is sending them to good schools and taking care of them, so they must have someone that would report them missing, at, at the very least. Unless... What if one of their parents was part of Cradle? Now it could be anybody, it could just be a random person that works for Cradle that was in on the Nonary games, but out of everyone involved, I think that Ace is actually a strong candidate to be their dad. He is old enough to have had two 20-ish old kids. He has prospagnasia, so he wouldn't recognize their faces, and it's been quite a few years, so they have grown up. He would have also had the resources to send them to good schools back in the day. They also might have been showing some kind of science or abilities that prompted him to research the morphogenetic field in the first place. Furthermore, the people that say that they are orphans are Snake and Seven, which could have easily been lied to. This makes the end of the original Nonary game that much crazier. What if when she was in the incinerator, she was watching her father, Ace, trying to kill her? From there, she would probably disown her dad, which goes into the final theory. Ace is also the only one of the original owners of Cradle to survive, despite being the mastermind and the cause of all the strife to begin with. Is it because deep down they have some kind of love or affection for their dear old dad? Now there is a lot of evidence against all of this, but it is food for thought and it's setting up my final theory. Theory 9 after the first Nonary game, Santa and Akane, who are Ace's kids, realize that their father is a monster and they ask Seven and Santa to lie about them surviving. That's why only 16 kids were found alive, as that's all that got reported. This would throw Ace off their backs because he might believe that they are dead and he wouldn't go looking for them. Over the years, this story has become part of the narrative that Snake and Seven always say to themselves and to others, so they start to believe it. When Seven's memories start returning, the lie that he's been saying for nine years comes back first, which explains the discrepancy between the truth and the lie. When everybody meets June, only Junpei knows her real name, so no one else would even think it's the same person. Also, other people in Japan have the name Akane anyway, so it's not like they would instantly know that she is the same person from the first Nonary game. This theory clears up a few things that have been rattling around in my head. Like, Yuchikoshi says that Snake and Seven knew more than what they were saying. This would imply that that is true. He also implied at least that Seven was working with Akane, and this supports that idea because they've been telling the lie that they died in order to hide them from their parents, so they were unwittingly helping them out, but not actually with this Nonary game, just with the fact that they have been hiding them for the last nine years. That wrong memory that Seven has is actually wrong, and by the end of the game when he has that sly smile, he remembers that he did save Akane, and that he remembers the fact that he told that lie in order to get uh, Ace off of their backs, so he's just being happy that it all worked out and that she did in fact survive. Or you could fuse this with the idea that the world is in flux, and maybe some of the wrong memories are from tapping into the morphogenetic field. This could be why Seven has such a vivid memory of Akane's death. He tapped into the wrong timeline, but then when she survives, he goes into the right timeline and gets all of the new memories. It also explains why Snake kept saying that she died in order to protect from her father, but he doesn't have any vivid memories as far as I can remember. The fact that 16 people were recorded missing and 16 kids were found is very strange, but Seven and Snake lying for the kids to help protect him makes more sense. All of this makes sense to me and is now part of my new head headcanon because it just ties up a lot of loose ends, but it does have so many holes in it, so you can definitely point them out in the comments below. So those are my nine theories of 999. Now I know some of them are proven right and some of them are proven wrong thanks to the sequel games which I have now played, but these theories are still a lot of fun. I had so much fun writing these down and thinking up these different ideas when the game was finished because 999 is such a fantastic game. I want to hear your guys' theories. I want to hear what you thought about like what was going to happen in the future of the series or what you thought about when you were playing the game. I would also love for you to rip apart my theories because I know that there are a bunch of holes in them and I just want to have this discussion with like different people and like maybe coming up with different ideas about some of the 
the different things that are happening in this game. I just want to talk about this game because it's so fantastic and there needs to be more 999 love in the world. So don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below with anything and everything that you could think of, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Japanese names are so hard. I wish I was Japanese so I could pronounce these names better. You know, I could be like, Watashi wa, Watashi wa Lightane. <laughs> no, it wouldn't even be Lightane because that doesn't make sense in, um, <laughs> in Japanese. But uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a bit of fun. Um, go menasai to any uh, Japanese people out there that watch my show. That's like a, the extent of my, um, my Japanese right there. <laughs> so let's get on with the theories. <laughs>